guys, there's going to be a lot of ground to cover and a couple of things I want to say, some announcements. Uh, looking at the questionnaire I made, uh, I've come to the conclusion that I will be retaining my off-the-cuff freestyle. Um, it's the style I personally feel most comfortable with. Before I made this video, I actually began scripting something, and it just felt so stifling. Um, I think both methods have their their positives and their negatives, and maybe one day I will script something, but for the time being, based on the feedback, I wouldn't say that the vast majority of my uh, viewers said that I should um, not script it, but I would say the good, the large majority did say appreciate my off-the-cuff, free-flowing style, and through that, I'm going to uh, keep on doing that. So there's that. Another thing, and it doesn't apply to the vast majority of my viewers, I wanted to mention, is uh, my new policy regarding trolls. I guess as I gain new subscribers and more people pay attention to my videos, a consequence, even though it's a good thing of that, is that you start getting trolls. In two specific instances, uh, well actually three, um, one guy, I don't remember his exact name, but he literally was proclaiming himself to be Jesus Christ and how we were all damned and we're all whatever. I just got tired of all his useless comments, and so I uh, blocked him. And then there was a guy, I believe his name is Sater, Sater, uh, 1966, something like that. And he would just pontificate on about with a lot of pseudo-intellectual nonsense, and uh, really was just being uh, aggressive and uh, verbally combative. And, and I have a high tolerance threshold, threshold for that kind of crap, to be honest. I really do. But... After getting the, I'm um, being a bit hyperbolic, the thousandth comment, which was basically a repeat of the last 999, I thought, eh, I'm going to block this guy, because he was contributing nothing to the conversation. I'm all for positive criticism. I'm even for oppositional criticism, that, you know, views that are diametrically opposed to mine, as long as they're well, it's well-founded, but he was just going on. Then what I believe to be was an some kind of uh, made-up account by some guy who got angry at me for banning him. Maybe the guy thought he was Jesus Christ. He just started writing in block capitals uh, how bad I am, fuck you, Stargars, fuck you, fuck you, and so on and so forth. I bat blocked him immediately. This will be my new policy. Of course, it doesn't apply to 99.99% .99 of my viewers. Just wanted to say that. Moving on to business. Moving on to business. I've been thinking a lot about uh, the sort of the evolution of a man going his own way. And I think it might be helpful to spell out the process. Um, and one of the reasons I want to do this is because, like it or not, there definitely is a rift between MRAs, and men, men who are concern, concerned with men's issues, who still advocate relationships, traditional or otherwise, and marriage, still advocate the idea that there's so many, so many fish out there in the sea that you, you're probably going to find a good one eventually, or you might not but there's still some good ones. And the men who really have taken a stand to go their own way, I, I don't think it's a, a conflict per se, although it is a slight conflict of interest, I suppose. But um, the, in order to reach a synthesis of thought and explaining what the differences are and then and, and finally gain the, my, my rather contrarian viewpoint, yet again, t towards the, those men who still advocate pursuing relationships with females, it is important to take a look at um, the way the way a, a man going his own way has become just that. And what I hope to get out of this is maybe some, some, the, some of the same self-reflection my viewers, maybe they've gone through the same kinds of thought processes and feelings that I have. Um, and this is just, these are, this is my own personal observations and, and, and listening to other men's stories and, and, of course, my own. But here goes. I think we all go through various stages on our way to becoming men going their own way. It's not a clear-cut thing. Um, and it's a process that can, in some ways, be, um, be indefinite in time in terms of the, the time span. Some by some people it happens very quickly, and others it doesn't. Some people are in the middle. But one thing, I think the initial spark is let's be honest. It is a kind of disappointment. That's the initial spark. It's not the first failed relationship, the first failed encounter with a woman. It's 
that repeated, it's, it's the repetition thereafter. And then you start wondering, hmm, is there something up? To complement that from the outside, you start reading, maybe not reading, who reads women's magazines, or looking at the covers, or hearing stories, or watching, watching telly, or whatever. And you just you start hearing things that you will now, in your current state of, of a man going his own way, identify as being deeply misandric. But you're just thinking, hmm, what's up with that? Men are all pigs. For example, there's a popular, popular nine, uh, song by a group called the Atsta in, in Germany that translated simply goes, uh, men are pigs, they just want one thing. Uh, <laughs> these were men who, who, were, uh, who, who had sung it. One wonders if they're being ironic or not. I, I'd like to think, it, I mean, whether or not, and why would make a song like that? Um, very popular song. You start noticing things like picking, you know, um, or the, it's very subtle sometimes, or it's not subtle anymore to us, but it used to be. Is he fulfilling your needs? Dozens of these sorts of, sorts of articles. I was re-watching a Girl Writes What's video today, and she mentioned, I, I thought she was just pulling out of her ass, to be honest. She said, uh, that's why she says on the effect that's why these days you can get articles such as do Vancouver men suck so I, did, I literally googled that phrase and lo and behold I found an article five pages long by some wench full of herself describing why Vancouver men suck so it actually was an article but you start picking up on stuff like that you really do and you start noticing it all and you just start scratching your head this is really weird um, and I've lived the majority of my adult life in Europe, so you know, I, I, and I've lived in the, originally from the States, and so I kind of, I would say mixed perspective, but I've seen a lot of different sides to these things, and it's just as bad here as it is there. It's, it's basically a global phenomenon, at least in the West. It's a global Western phenomenon. And so you just think, this is just screwy. What's wrong with it? There's something wrong with the picture here. Then you add it to your experiences with your relationships. And it just becomes very, very, very strange that there seem to be too many coincidences. Then you want, you observe. One thing I've always done, I observe. Quite qu public, uh, quite quiet in the public. I walk about in a quiet fashion. I tend to mind my own business, but I'm always observing. You see the way uh, women interact with their boyfriends and so on, the things that they say and vice versa between them. and. Uh, you notice these things. And then, of course, you have friends who go through similar to identical experiences. And the pieces of the puzzle start to come together. And what initially was a grand puzzle seems to make sense. It's not a conspiracy, but there is something malevolent, for lack of a better word, behind it all. There's something going on. Something about maybe female mentality? Hmm, what's going on here? And you might start reading up about feminism and, and what is, what's actually done. Um, I mean, feminism with a capital F, not the inherent feminism that I, I would suggest exists with females. And that really gets you wondering. At some point in time, in that synthesis of thought, uh, these many, many thoughts you have, you, 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 it all comes together and then you just you realize that something truly is amiss. When you realize something truly is amiss, I think what happens to many of us, and I'm no exception, there's no reason to be ashamed of it, you enter a period of mourning. When you realize that relationships, love, all these things have essentially been mythology, uh, adult mythology, not, well, ch children's mythology as well. I mean, we, we, we children are indoctrinated with this stuff as well. In fact, that's that's how we got it in the first place. And later on in adult years, you notice that, that this has all been a fairy tale. The stuff you've been fed has been a fairy tale. You do enter into a period of mourning. It's, it's the recognition, as I've said many times, that of your own disposability, of, of your, your actual value is merely that of an appliance as a utility, something to be either used, if it's useful or not, to, or not in the case of not being useful, to be discarded. Um, that can be a rather lengthy period. And after that, once you get over that, I believe, this period of mourning, 
you attain something else, which is freedom. Freedom, ultimately, is what I'm advocating, what I think is the best solution to all of this. Uh, if, you, if you're not beholden to the clutches of a woman, you have a lot more freedom, financially, personally, in virtually every respect. And whilst many articles are published on the benefits of partnership for your health, um, I doubt that guy, that guy in the Denver jail that we heard about recently is doing quite very well health-wise. I'm sure he was, he was with his wife for quite some time before she decided to throw him away like a piece of trash. So you get past the morning, and you just have a kind of a clarity. And you also have a sense of freedom, a newfound sense of freedom, that you just don't give a shit anymore. And that's lovely. Um, when I used to, I am rambling here, but when I used to care about what women thought, when I used to have take a direct interest in women, I would pay attention to whether I was shaven or not and how I was dressing. I just don't care anymore. In fact, the less attention I get from women, the better. And those are the stages you go through. It's, it's realizing something is amiss based on your own experiences, absorbing information from the environment. Uh, based on observation, reading, listening, discussion with male friends, recognizing that there's a common pattern here, identifying that pattern. And then finally, something clicks into place. For me, for me, ironically enough, this is a guy who still pursues, but a friend of mine I haven't spoken to for quite some time, he once said to me, the only thing that can break a man is a woman. I think that was the key to me, for me to realizing the truth about all of this. My sort of aha moment. And, and then eventually you discover YouTube and, and it sort of clicks into place. I think that's how most of us become, I don't want to speak for everyone, men going our own way. It's a repeated pattern based on our observations of our own relationships and the women who are, we were involved with. Friends, observations, environment, media, all the media influence, it's, it's all out there. You guys don't believe me? Google, uh, do Vancouver men suck? You'll get a five-page article. I actually put myself through the torture of reading it, mind you, but never mind that. So that there, there's that. That's how we got here, as men going our own way. And that's where we are right now. Do I think there's some rift between men going their own way and men still advocating relationships? Yes. Because, in my opinion, a man going his own way is not the... Who knows what if there's more evolution to it, but certainly the more or less final stage in that evolution of thought. A man who still clings to the idea that a relationship with a female in today's climate is feasible... Um, obviously is still in, the, in, the, in one of those stages or in processing something, in my opinion. Um, he's not quite there yet. And as Bob Russell said, he so desperately wants to believe it's possible. He so desperately seeks that companionship. And this leads me to another point, which I want to address to, at some length. One of my viewers asked me, why do I keep on calling it an addiction? Our attraction to women. Why is it an addiction? Hmm. Well, let's just say that an addiction doesn't need to be a traditional addiction, but an addiction isn't, to my mind, any sort of substance, or in this case, a person, that uh, can have a uh, highly negative and harmful influence on your well-being, uh, whether physically, mentally, or both. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's good for you. And I think most people, for example, uh, marriage seems to be a, sem a semi, well, it is, of course, institutionalized, and it certainly came about as a result of, it certainly came about as a result of natural, natural processes, I would suggest. Who, who wants to get married these days? Only completely ignorant people, fools, and I don't know. So uh, men, speaking of course, men, women want to get married because they get all the goodies. Just because something is natural doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you. There's a lot of poisons that are natural. You're not going to take them. Um, and there's nothing wrong, as one of my, I think it was Save the Men, who, who poses with, who, with wanting to have companionship. Even now, uh, 
if I still subscribe to the fairy tale, I would like to have female companionship. But the important thing is to put everything in its proper perspective. You cannot live in an unreality. You cannot live in a fairy tale. As much as we want to live in a fairy tale, you know, sometimes I'll close my eyes. I'm not going to lie. I have my weaknesses. I have lots of weaknesses. And I sit back and I think, wouldn't it be nice if, or, I'll reveal even more, even now, in my current state of mind, I will think back to my last ex and the illusion of this night. I remember I took her to the ballet and it just seemed, everything seemed so fine and so nice and so perfect and she really seemed to care about me. Of course, it was all an illusion, but for a couple of moments, I'll fall back and that'd be all of our weaknesses. But the important thing is that the majority of the time you live in reality and that you don't succumb to fairy tales. That's the important thing. It is a fairy tale, at least in modernity, and I'm not a big fan of traditionalism anyway, that, uh, that companionship can work. We all might want it. The crack whore wants crack. The alcoholic wants alcohol, and so on and so forth, but it doesn't mean it's good for us. So we need to take precautions regarding this, and we need to, unfortunately, disassociate ourselves from the delusion, illusion, and fairy tale. It was fed to us as children, as boys, and then, of course, was filtered along the line, into our down the line, into our adulthood, and now most of us still believe it. Most of us, I'm not speaking of my viewers, but the vast majority of men. Uh, that's why I call it an addiction. It, it's simply a, a harmful habit. That's what basically, at the end of the day, what an addiction is. It's a harmful habit. Is engaging in a relationship with the modern female a harmful habit? I would say it is. By all objective evidence, it's very clearly a very harmful habit. Hence, my character the characterization of that as an addiction. Quite simply, that's why I call it an addiction. Um, and I think in a, if it's a harmful habit, you know, one one best one should best kick that habit. Uh, it's simply not viable anymore. Now, having said all that, I need to say some more. Next point. Uh, Mr. Rocky Mystery mentioned something about uh, altruism. Uh, specifically, he mentioned reciprocal altruism. Now, I love neologisms. I've always been a fan of language and playing with language and mixing it up. But quite frankly, going by the dictionary definition of altruism, which I'll read out loud, Altruism, the principles or practice of unselfish concern for or devotion to the welfare of others. That is to say that, in large measure, as much as I subscribe to Darwinian uh, theory in lar for most things, this notion that you can call something reciprocal altruism, it's, 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 I'm calling bullshit here. Um, that, that is a, a, simply not what altruism is. Altruism is selflessness. If you expect to get something in return, it's, it's fine. That's a, But we call that a trade. We call that mutual benefit. Let's not call it altruism. Let's call it what it is. And, as another viewer pointed out, with regards to Brifo's Law, I was reading one of the comments, uh, trade is all well and good. But the simple fact is that because men have a sense of honor and a sense of gratitude, with us, with men, past favors count. We remember the things that people do for us. I remember things that my friends did for me 10 years ago, and I'm still in their debt in a sort of metaphorical sense, and I still uh, approach them with gratitude regarding that. That is not the case, uh, per, per Brifo's Law, by Brifo's Law, with regards to females. What you did 10 years ago is irrelevant. In fact, probably what you did a year ago is irrelevant. The question is, what can you do now? How long can you provide the benefit? Specifically, I want to address this. It's really important. Uh, let's call it what it is. Mutual, mu mutual benefit. Let's not call it reciprocal altruism. That You're really just perverting what altruism is. Very few people act altruistically. But it's certainly not what the relationship between a man and woman is based on. Um, and so, yeah, the, we, I just don't buy into that. Um, you can give a lot, and at some point in time, the question is, when is it enough? When, when do your past deeds 
count for something now. When you're ill, when you can no longer work, I know one of my subscribers literally can't work anymore because of an, an accident he had. I believe he was working as a paramedic. Um, and as far as my understanding is concerned, I, th I think the, the, this female partner left him because of that. So, you know, there are a lot of holes in, in this idea of reciprocal altruism and uh, all leading up to, once again, the futility of relationships with females. As long as men are seen uniformly as utility to females, and no offense, Rocky Mystery, but I believe ultimately, no matter how good your relationship to your wife is, that she probably sees it that way as well, at least unconsciously, um, that will always be a risk. That when you fall ill, as is the case and as is custom to us frail human beings, including men, remember we're, we're human beings too, uh, you will not receive support, or at least enough support until you can get back on your feet. But what if you can't get back on your feet? That can happen as well. What if you're paralyzed? And so on and so forth. So I wanted to touch on that. Reciprocal altruism, sorry, that that's an oxymoron. You know? You're either altruistic or not. Mutual benefit, that's okay. But once again, the key thing to stress here is that benefit, true true benefit, uh, is in the in the eyes of a man uh, something that can be regarded uh, seen as a benefit across the span of time. A man recognizes when when others have done something for him. It's it's it also, even when it was in the past. It's not just a question of give me what you can do now. Um, of course, that, that's an issue as well. But men having a sense of honor uh, can recognize that past deeds count as well. And uh, well, you see my point. Finally, I want to talk about the scrap heap. And scrap heap is what I call the relationship, the modern relationship. In order to illustrate this, I'll offer two examples as a metaphor. The first one, they're both automobile examples, so bear with me. In the first case, if you have a car that is, is totally broken down. In fact, it's so damaged that the cost of the repairs would actually be greater than it would be to replace the car. And that, as is often the case, you know, mechanics love ripping people off. So you're probably not. You probably end up buying a new car anyway. The analogy I would, the other analogy I make, which I prefer, is a a a, a car that's been to, reduced to a total scrap heap. Um, and no person in his right mind would likely try to reassemble a car, at least to what it used to be. Rather, they would try to make something entirely new of it. That is my perception of the relationship. Um, I've seen it argued that men and women need each other. Well, that might be so, and I've also seen it argued that Miguel, or, sorry, men going their own ways, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a permanent solution. Well, clearly not. Nothing is permanent. And, but as far as the span of our lifetimes are concerned, as long as we're drawing breath, it is kind of a semi-permanent solution. Because the alternative is to try to, from, to either try to invest all the money in the broken car, uh, the broken automobile, even though it's going to be far, far more costly than replacing it, or try to reassemble the same car from the, the, the totally blasted heap of scrap uh, that you have before you, which is the modern relationship. You need to start something new, start something, start with something fresh. I've often spoken of the analogy of the phoenix rising from the ashes. I, I make uh, no secret of the fact that I advocate a total dissolution of the current social, social structures, not anarchy, but at least traditional relationship structures, in order to find something new, if it's feasible at all. Not trying to make something that's been that is so severely broken and so uh, irrevocably so, and so severely in need of repairs, that that it's just a complete waste of time trying to make those repairs. Um, there's a reason why the car was scrapped; um, it wasn't working anymore. So we need to make a new automobile that maybe with a better engine, maybe with an, an, a hydro engine that runs on the. Uh, through, through purely hydraulic power, anything. But no, that's just an idea I'm throwing out here. But the idea here is simply that we can't just stay with the old model. Men who want to continue with the old model, tradi traditionalists or otherwise, um, are clinging to something that no longer works. 
And I think, and I'm sympathetic to their level of desperation because we all yearn for companionship as men with females. That's what we want. That's one of the reasons why recently I've been uh, posting a glut of images on my videos of highly attractive Asian, specifically Korean women. That was my own, or I suppose is my weakness. I find them extremely attractive. But to know, to recognize that behind that beauty lurks a demon, essentially a demon, or at the very least, a person that you do not really want to associate with uh, beyond perhaps a one-night stand. Um, that's why I, I post those images. Trying to resuscitate, uh, the final analogy, um, a person who's, clinic, who, who's clinically alive because his organs still work and his brain on some level works, but is non-responsive to anything. I mean, that just hooked up to a bunch of tubes. Uh, that's the modern relationship. That's the scrap heap. We need to let the person die. We need to end his suffering. Take off the tubes. Let the person go in peace. That's what we need to do with the relationship. The only way we're going to make progress is with total dissolution and, sorry to use the word, destruction of the old model. Because it's not working anymore. It simply is not. And, and men who think they can make it work uh, sooner or later you're going to realize that you're just fooling yourself. Sorry to say, it's a bit harsh, but ultimately you're going to realize you're just fooling yourself. And that going your own way, rather than being an alternative, probably is the only viable solution. Um, unless you want to keep on trying to put the scrap together and spending more and more money on that broken car rather than getting a completely new one. Just pull the plug, guys. Pull the plug. You'll be a lot better off for it, um, because the relationship, like that patient who's alive, basically undead, you, you, the relationship is undead. Um, we need to, to, to kill the undead. The undead are unholy, right? And uh, we need to breathe new life into whatever that might be. That's not going to happen anytime soon, but uh, you know, the only way to do it is to deprive them of power. Boycott the product. Boycott, boycott women. Don't buy into it. That is the solution. If, if, if you're still searching, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. You want to do that. But I think ultimately we're all in that, we all engage in that process where we finally reach that synthesis and that epiphany, that aha moment. It's not going to work. On a final note, I know this is long. Some people don't like my rambling, but hey, this is my style. Those men who claim within a relationship say, oh, my relationship is great, and so on and so forth, uh, that it's working, or they, the woman actually cares for them, and so on and so forth. I've seen, I've seen men in real life uh, enjoy, quote-unquote, enjoy those sorts of relationships. When you actually observe, on closer inspection, how many concessions they make to their own personhood, their own uh, freedom, it's, it's rather alarming. And remember... Uh, Another form of shaming language is to always couch things in terms of compromise. Ooh, you need to compromise. That's why you can't get a relationship, or that's why it won't work. You need to compromise. Compromise inevitably simply means that the man needs to sacrifice more of himself to obtain or to retain the favor of the female. That is a no-go. Um, talk about enlightened self-interest. Well, that's what, that's what ma a man going his own way is doing, is engaging in enlightened self-interest, uh, in my opinion. You'd all be the people who still advocate the relationships with women, however natural it might be. And I'm not, not look, I love women too. I mean, love. You either love women or you understand them. I, I desire women too, but the uh, simple fact is that uh, the car is broken, it's a, a scrap heap, forget about it. It's not going to work anymore. It's just done. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching.